need some tax run support. Today's topic is transferring university or college tuition from a dependent to their parent. This video is for anyone who has children and are looking to reduce their taxes owing by getting their children or their dependent to transfer some of their tuition for them. Now, I wrote down a very quick list of some of the forms we are going to be using for this demonstration. Uh, there's not too many. It's only about six forms, I believe. Uh, all of them listed here. Um, we're going to be going into a little bit more detail about the significance of each form, but right now I just want to let you know that we have six forms we're going to be opening in this form. So first thing we're going to do is create a return. We're going to create one return for the student, one return for the uh, father or the, or the parent. Now our student's name is Jim. I've created his return right here. And uh, his going to be his dad. He's going to be trying to transfer his tuition to his dad. His dad's name is John. Now, um, Jim was a student. He went to University of Ryerson. He paid about $10,000 in fees, and he made income of uh, $14,000. He worked at the Burger Shack, and I recorded his uh, T4 information down here. So $14,000 was a good year for Jim. Now, uh, first form is we're going to look at is the T2202. Uh, it's already open in the search. I already searched it in the form manager. We can open it right here. Now this is a form that um, each student enrolled in a university will receive. Now it essentially has the name of the school and the eligible tuition fees paid as well as the um, number of months uh, full-time or part-time. So University University of Ryerson, hope I'm spelling that right, $10,000 and he was full-time eight months. This is the transferring tuition and education amount checkbox. Now um, you have to check mark this box if you want your son or daughter to transfer you the maximum amount according to the CRA guidelines. Now for the province of Ontario, the maximum amount is $5,000 for federal and $6,922 for provincial. Now a few quick reminders is that uh, federal and provincial amounts are um, different for each province. Well, sorry, provincial amounts are different for each province. Um, and the second thing is if you don't want to transfer the maximum amount, don't check mark this box. If you only want to transfer, let's say, 4000 for federal and 1000 for provincial, you would enter them into the boxes here. But for the purpose of this example, we're going to be checking the transfer maximum box. Okay, now the second box we're going to be looking at is the one down here. And this is check if you are transferring this amount to an individual other than your spouse. Now, essentially what this means is that the box determines that the person who the student is transferring the tuition to uh, is in fact a parent and not their significant other. So we're going to again check mark the box uh, for this example. Now wait a minute, I thought you said the federal maximum was $5,000 and the provincial maximum was about $6,900. How come Jim's maximum transfer is less? Now, this is because before tuition can be transferred, the student essentially has to use up his or her credits to generate a tax liability of zero dollars. If the student has high income, any of that tuition has to be used by the student to reduce the tax obligation to zero before they can transfer. Now, we can see the calculation for both the amount the student needs to claim and the transferable amount at the federal level by accessing the Schedule 11. We can type down the Schedule 11 in the Form Manager and bring it up here. Now the Schedule 11 it calculates the amount the student needs to claim for himself or herself and the transferable amount at the federal level. Now the first amount we're going to look at of the Schedule 11 is line 17. It's this line right here. Now essentially what this is, is it's the total tuition your child paid plus the textbook amounts as calculated by the CRA minus the child's total net income. Now, the simplest way to think about line 17 is that if the amount entered is over $5,000, then the student's not going to be able to transfer anything. If the amount is under $5,000, then the student will essentially transfer the amount of the difference between $5,000 and the amount at line 17. The amount on line 17 minus $5,000 will give you essentially the maximum transferable amount for Jim. In this case, if we scroll down to the bottom of the Schedule 11, we can see on line 327 that the difference between the two and thus the max federal amount transferred is about $3,685.
the maximum provincial amount we can transfer. And we're going to open the form Provincial Schedule 11. We're just going to type down PS11, open this form. Now, essentially, this form is very similar to the Schedule 11, except for a few minor differences. One is the difference in the maximum transferable amount, and the other is the line number, where it shows the provincial tuition and education amounts uh, claimed by the students in 2016. In this case, it's line number 13, and for Jim, it is about $3,000. 939. If the line number of line 13 is less than the pro provincial maximum, about 6900, then there's going to be some transferable amount. In this case, if we scroll down to the very bottom, we can see on line 5920 that the provincial amount available for transfer is about $2,983. Okay, so the student's return is all finished. We have entered all the necessary forms. Once again, that's the T2202 tuition, the Schedule 11, and the Provincial Schedule 11. So only three forms on the child's return. The next thing we're going to do is go over to the parent's return, not John. Now, we're going to want to enter some information on the family work chart. So pretty basic information. So the information about the child, Jim, his uh, SIN number, birth date, and relationship for son. We're going to enter his net income here of about $14,000. Now, near the middle of the family work chart, we'll be able to find the maximum transferable amount. Now, right here, we can see the tuition, education, and textbook amount transfer. Now, remember when we open those two forms in Jim's return? We're going to go back to Jim's return and record these two amounts. So first, the federal. From Jim's return, we can see the federal amount is line 327. So we're going to go ahead and record this amount in the father's return. So that is 3,685. Oh, sorry, 3,685. Okay. For the provincial amount, we're going to again go back to Jim's return and go to the provincial schedule 11. And we're going to see that the provincial amount transferred is 2,983. So we're going to write down 2. Nine, eight, three. Now, some users might be wondering, well, where are we going to see these uh, tuition amounts transferred? The first to see the federal, we're going to just type down S1 for the Schedule 1. And we're going to be able to see the Schedule 1 transferred tuition amount on line 324. That's tu tuition, education, amount transferred from a child. Now, for the provincial amount, because we are in the province of Ontario, we are going to open the form Ontario 428. That's the Ontario tax form, this form right here. And once again, we'll be able to see the provincial amount transferred, this line right here, 5,860 tuition and education transfer from the child. And there you go. That is how you do a tuition transfer from a student to a parent. A uh, very simple thing to do in tax drawing, but before we finish, I'd like to go over a few common mistakes people make on tuition transfers. Okay, so the first mistake is people asking us, can I transfer my daughter or son's previous year's tuition or unused tuition to my return? And the short answer is no. Now, the second mistake is recording the T2202, that's the child's eligible tuition fees paid, on the parent's return. Now, the T2202 is issued to your son or your daughter by the school, by the university. It has uh, either his or her name on it. It's not yours, so parents, please do not put the slip on your tax return. Put it on the student's return only. If you do, by accident, put it on your tax return. The CRA is going to figure it out. They're going to audit your return. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and leave suggestions down below for future videos.